Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What were some of the necessary evils of history? Don't know if this has been said and it's kinda hyper specific, but Churchill and the Siege of Calais. He ordered the garrison to hold to the last man, effectively sacrificing a few thousand lives as there was no evacuation order planned. The battle would tie up German forces so the evacuation at Dunkirk could proceed. A few thousand versus roughly 300,000. Allowing some attacks to take place even after Hitler's Enigma encryption device was cracked by the English and they knew when and where the attacks would occur. They could only act on the intelligence to thwart attacks if they could quickly come up with an alternate way to find out which the Germans would find believable. Body snatching in the 19th century. Medicine schools would illegally buy human bodies that were dug up from graves in order to study anatomy and teach medicine students in secret, because at the time it was illegal and not acceptable to use human bodies for science or education purposes. The only way schools could get human bodies legally was from death sentenced people who also had been condemned to dissection on top of that by the courts, which was very rare and couldn't supply enough bodies for medicine schools. So there was a literal black market of dead bodies and the body snatchers would risk death penalty themselves to make profit from digging up bodies that were freshly buried. The bodies of young adult people were particularly sought after and expensive. But it also allowed scientists and students to learn about anatomy and improve surgery techniques, which allowed medicine as a whole to make a lot of progress and saved many lives in the end. Whatever the fuck was going on with Victorian psychological medicine. That kind of stuff was barbaric by today's standards but back then, even the creepiest and most brutal stuff was paving the way towards modern medicine. It was the first time they actually started caring for mental patients, instead of giving them to the church or streets. They experimented, and learned, and tried. To this day we experiment on rats. We give them cancer, HIV, we get them addicted to drugs, we amputate their limbs, etc etc etc. And it saved hundreds of millions of human lives. It's troublesome. It's one of the hardest ethical conundrums for me. Because I literally use a medication every day that drastically improves my life quality, and it wouldn't exist if not for all those rats which were experimented on. I haven't seen someone else mention it, but I could be wrong about that. But, one of the necessary evils through history, has to be the experimentation on animals, specifically mice. They have been instrumental in our understanding of diseases. On a smaller scale, I would not be alive if the Second World War never happened. My grandfather was in a relationship with another woman, and they might have got married. But she was killed during the Blitz. Eventually my grandfather found my grandmother. It's kind of crazy to think about. Possibly the Agricultural Revolution. There's a school of thought that argue that it led to a diminished diet and poorer health for everyone, greater social inequality between classes and gender, and greater instances of warfare between and within sedentary and nomadic societies. So life really sucked for countless generations of humans for thousands of years. And yet it created the conditions for a population boom and the division of labor needed for humans to get really, really good at more specialized trades, skills, and learning, and here we are. WW2 where the higher-ups of Allied forces intercepted German communications but they didn't want to give it away by avoiding would-be dangerous missions. They, instead, sacrificed soldiers so that the Germans wouldn't realize their communications have been decoded. Allied forces would then be able to devastate the Germans in future missions that were way more significant. I guess it's relative so much advancement was made because of wars and experimentations on people. Also there is the aspect that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the colonization of various countries from Europeans which I'm sure a good chuck of that process went less than smoothly. Necessary evil is relative to whom determines the act was necessary and evil. The Black Plague During the time before the outbreak the world lived in pretty close together city dwellings. Like several families to a room. 
Most of Europe was a feudalistic state so no one could own anything like land or themselves for that matter. The rivers were toxic from people just throwing feces and other vile things just anywhere. After the plague ended most of Europe had died. Feudalism was ending rapidly. Wages went up and so did life expectancy. People spread out and developed better sanitation. The ground was more rich with nutrients for growing crops on account of the mass graves. I would definitely say WW2. Germany losing was definitely necessary for Europe to become united in the way it is now. As a German myself this is a kind of bitter pill. Because I find it unbelievable sad how many lives have been lost. Also the loss of culture and historical sites is dramatic in a way. Many historical city centers forever lost a quarter of Germany's territory and most of the of the world first class scientists and expert driven into exile by the Nazis. Hitler has been one of the greatest calamities for Europe but also for Germany as well. On the other, depending on your views of religion. There's a theory in which some anthropologists say that religion developed as a result of the tragically common decisions pre-Neolithic families had to make when they realized that there wouldn't be enough food to support everyone. In such cases this would often mean killing slash abandoning one or more children. The theory states that in such cases the parents needed a way of explaining to the surviving children why they had to kill their sibling and thus was born the idea of making sacrifices to gods or deities. That essentially the seed of human religion was their attempts to not traumatize their surviving children who witnessed their siblings being murdered or abandoned. Letting the Japanese Emperor Hirohito live after WW2. He authorized Nazi-level fuckery and by any seemingly reasonable standard he should have been removed from the census. But if you look at the Japanese mindset from WW2 not leaving him in power could have easily turned Japan into a modern-day Iraq. The Crimes of Ted Bundy I know, a weird one. He taught us a man who looks ahem hot and studies a prestigious degree can also be a horrible person and do vile things to others. He revolutionized forensic psychology and police investigations. He helped psychologists build the blueprint for the modern psychopath. If Russia never did its five-year plans, often at brutal expense of the people, they never would have industrialized and Russia would have fallen to Hitler. If Russia fell then the Allies might not have been able to take France, since resources would have been poured into the Eastern Theater. The Great Depression, it lead to many social net and federal assistance programs many of which are still relied upon today. Also led to more regulation and governance over stocks to prevent fraud for investors. Objectively probably none as there's no real way to know if things couldn't have gone another way had things been done above board most of the time. We live in a history made by what worked, not the only way. That said, here's my subjective answer. Sherman's March to the Sea. Much of what transpired would be considered a war crime. It was worth it. The Confederacy was a provider and guardian of atrocities, and bringing it to its knees with the quickness was better than a slow demise or, much, much, worse, their success. Guns, but not in the war slash game slash self defense slash for fun sense. Where firearms not invented, certain things wouldn't have been invented and slash or stand artist. The main one being threading on nuts slash bolts slash screws etc. Before guns came along, threading was not stand artist meaning only this bolt could screw onto the screw etc. Fossil fuel slash coal. And for some developing nations, they're still necessary evils. For the developed world, they're convenient evils. America has at least a couple well-known recent examples. Necessary, defeating the Nazis. Evil, supporting a genocidal totalitarian regime in World War II. Necessary, defeating the genocidal totalitarian regime we supported in World War II. Evil, supporting authoritarian regimes around the world throughout the Cold War. Chernobyl. If we didn't learn what we did from the effects of Chernobyl, nuclear plants would be so much more dangerous. Modern plants have a containment where inside is the reactor. Chernobyl didn't have that because they wanted to save money. Horrible, 
but needed. Pearl Harbor The American public was still largely unwilling to engage in international conflict, both as a result of WWI and the large population of German immigrants. Once the Japanese attacked, it immediately spurred the entire nation into action. Edit, judging from the downvotes I'm guessing there are people here who wish the Axis powers would have won. Don't be a coward and prove to me this wasn't a necessary evil. Napoleon because even though he started many wars and a lot of people were killed because of him, he helped to spread the Enlightenment ideas through Europe and awaken the national spirit in places like Italy, Germany, and the Balkans. Keeping slavery legal, in quotes because it was clearly unconstitutional, at the founding of the US. If they had outright banned or even condemned it in the Constitution or Declaration of Independence the South very well might not have joined in the revolution against the British, the North would have been crushed, and the US may not have ever existed. Luckily we were able to use the Founding Fathers' words, not their actions, and build a better nation later on after the Civil War. Appeasement during WW2 Britain was absolutely not ready for war at the time. It would have been suicide for them to declare war, which is exactly what Hitler was planning. He didn't actually want the land, well, he did, but that's not the primary reason he took it. He wanted Britain to find his demands outrageous and declare war on him, and was furious when he found out they accepted his demand and didn't declare war. Dave Chappelle spoke on this but the murder of Emmett Till, more specifically his open casket funeral. No human deserves what happened to that boy but the aftermath of those images being published sparked a lot of change. I dislike these kinds of questions, as it makes us go back and play games with the idea of some sort of greater good. We feel it was the greater good, because many of us are alive due to the evils committed. But our lives are no more or less important than the lives lost that got us here, simply because we came later in the timeline. In particular, the idea of lives lost so that we can have a more comfortable existence is not something I'd consider necessary re, scientific and medical advancement due to war. These aren't necessary evils, they are decisions made in the moment, atrocities committed that shifted an event to favor more comfortable future, deeds performed to get a particular job done. They are only made necessary by our desire for the outcome they created rather than some other imagined history that does not exist. It can feel cathartic to think perhaps the deaths weren't in vain to allow our current existence. But given how we as a species are marching ourselves and our necessary advancement into climate collapse and, in many places, fascist ideology, we clearly give few shits about using the future these evils blessed us with to do better than those who came before us. I think when we think of evil as necessary, we disregard the dead as victims and shy away from being grateful for the lives they lived and lost in favor of seeing them as needed collateral. Oh my gosh there are so many. History tends to have a lot of evil that is left undisturbed until it pokes a bear with a stick. Pearl Harbor was a major contributor to the collapse of the Nazi regime, because it brought the USA in. On the World War II note, some would say the atomic weapons were a necessary evil. This is still up for much debate. According to many religions, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was a necessary evil as it led to the salvation of humankind for all who believe in him. Again, this is up for debate. I respect all who believe slash don't believe these events really transpired. When torture methods are used to stop actually evil people, like ISIS. Pretty much every war involves war crimes or human rights violations in one way or another, but if the ends justify the means, then it's arguably worth it. More Americans died in the American Civil War than any other war it's been involved in. But, because of that war, slavery was abolished. I don't know if this counts because Hitler is an absolute evil in every which way and accidentally created Hollywood. Pre-Nazi era, Germany was the leading film industry. Hitler came in and wanted to make it pure so the majority of filmmakers, actors, producers, and writers fled to the United States and came into Hollywood. Using Nazi experimental data from Joseph Mengele. We only know, 
and nowadays could only know to the extent we do about certain conditions because of him. Conditions like hypothermia and starvation to name a few, is because of that monumental piece of shit fascist. He died swimming and drowned from a stroke though. I truly hope he died in sheer panic, cold, and in darkness. Unable to control his body or take a breath of fresh air. All fascists deserve worse. This is a very United States take because that's where I live and I am a law student. There are a lot of these. The interpretation of Congress's Commerce Clause power led to the Supreme Court allowing a couple pretty authoritarian, anti-constitutional legislation through to start off. But then that precedent allowed for the court to later deem the Civil Rights Act as constitutional. Dropping the bombs on Japan was absolutely necessary at the time. They were out of control and had to be stopped. The Japan we know today would not exist if the bombs were never dropped. They would more than likely still be the imperialist nation they were and be nowhere near as technologically advanced as they are today. More than likely they would be akin to a country like Thailand or Philippines in terms of advancement. As much as I want to say the atomic bombings of Japan, there was an alternate way there. So if have to go siding with the the absolute batshit madman Joseph Stalin in WW2. Without Russia to serve as a diversion for Hitler, the war would have been very different. Cost many more lives, and perhaps resulted in the bombs being dropped in Germany instead. Testing medical procedures and medicine on animals. It's cruel, it's horrible, but we cannot morally test new stuff on humans straight away, there's too much risk. This does not apply to testing cosmetics immo, that should be banned as it's not medicinal. I would argue that the all the death involved with industrialization could be applied to this. Literally everything we have is a product of this, all our medicine, science, consumer goods and what not are products of industrialization. The huge amounts of destruction industrialization has done to individuals and communities incalculable. Whether we are talking about the destitution and neglect faced by the entire working class of the West or the millions peasants in the Soviet Union, someone paid the price. Additionally, creative destruction has made much beloved traditions and lifestyle incompatible with reality, often leaving people without a framework to live by, peasant lifestyles, religion etc. Fritz Haber is credited with creating the Haber process, which is used to create ammonia. He developed it so Germany had a better supply of gunpowder and other explosives during the First World War. If not for him, Germany wouldn't have lasted as long as they did. Effectively lengthening the war. However, another excellent use for ammonia is fertilizer. Although Fritz never intended for it, he's also the reason millions of people never starved to death. I do not believe in necessary evil. That which is necessary is not evil. That which is evil cannot be necessary. Expedient, perhaps. Easier than doing what is right, all the time, no matter the cost, sure. But ends do not justify means. If one's means are questionable, it is because one's ends are not pure enough morally. That one time in my teens when I thought PPL did they are eyebrows with Gillette and chopped off half of my eyebrow and had to wear emo bangs for a good two months because I lived with my dad and had no clue on how to draw them with makeup. All the conquests and wars. Humanity wouldn't have been the same if the Americas weren't discovered by EU. The exchange of foods alone shaped the world, not to mention the founding of all the nations and their inventions. USA being a leader in a lot of modern innovation slash technology. Nuclear weapons can be directly tied with why we have not had a major war since WW2. The threat of mutually assured destruction prevents the strongest countries from pulling the trigger on an actual war. Allying with the Soviets to stop Hitler. Because as horrifying as the Holocaust was, it was the test run for the upcoming Slavic genocide, with an estimated 150 to 175 m deaths planned. That's why all the big extermination camps were placed in Poland, once the Jews were dead, the Slavs would be next. WW1 Up until that war, many common people were little warmongers. 
During the American Civil War, people would set up picnics to watch a battle. Then the Great War happened. It was the first mechanized war. It saw the end result of the cavalry charge, introduced tanks, machine guns, and aircraft. It was only then that people realized just how horrific war really is. Surgery techniques also advanced as a result of the war. Sounds horrible but the grotesque experiments done during the Holocaust really advanced science a lot. Actually, Nazi science is a great contributor medically with resources still used to this day. Ethically it would be difficult to have gotten the same data without the horrors committed. The experiments done by a Russian surgeon named Leo something involved decapitating dogs and keeping the heads alive for as long as possible. It paved the way for heart transplantations and other types of surgery where you need artificial circulation. Honestly all of it. History is a learning tool showing what will and will not work for the future. These things have happened so we know not to repeat it. That's why there's the saying those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I refuse to say this was necessary, but it is very morally ambiguous and interesting, a lot of tech and medical advances in the US would have come around much later, if at all, without Operation Paperclip. The US literally whisked away a shitload of Nazi scientists before the Soviets could get to them. So many of these scientists took part in horrific crimes against humanity, but the research could arguably have saved lives in the long run. It's a tough question. I can't feel at peace with myself saying that someone can be morally justified because of the greater good. The US likes to pretend its hands are clean of its own immoral human experimentation, much less actions like Operation Paperclip. Dropping the atomic bombs. The alternatives were a protracted and bloody ground invasion of Japan, or an extended campaign of starvation and firebombing. Either would claimed as many if not more lives than the bombs and the devastation caused by the bombs made future world leaders much less cavalier about using atomic weapons in anger. I already know I'm going to get downvoted for this, but the use of the atomic bomb against Japan. I'm a war history buff and by most accounts, Japan was training women and kids to use bamboo spears to kill American soldiers in case of invasion. They were told that surrender was tantamount to treason, and honor is a very big part of the Japanese culture. Although it was horrifying and terrible using nuclear weapons against the mostly civilian populations of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it probably saved millions of lives on both sides and ended the war years earlier. The Soviet Union and the Red Scare, evil because the leaders of communist countries turned into tyrants. The industrialist world wouldn't have attained the social reforms of the last century without governments fearing that the working class would otherwise overthrow them. It's not history yet, but I think we're living it right now with COVID and the resulting vaccine breakthroughs that are occurring. I think what's being learned on the medicine front will greatly impact the course of medical advancement in a positive way for years to come. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.